on this week's episode of just a walk thanks uh butch takes down an american billionaire we talk just folk we compare i invincible versus hellbent look at broodmares the upcoming runners we've got uh, we look at if there's any value in in the queensland future markets and a little bit more hope you enjoy the show so have a great day today for now G'day and welcome to Just A Walk, thanks, uh, with myself, Mick Gannon, John O'Reiner, the Racing and Communications Manager at Mailbag Bloodstock, some say the industry's number one operator, you do you, uh, Robertos Scuzzdog, uh, the horse whisperer, um, they talk to him, he, he, he listens and he and he passes it on to you, and uh, Butchie Bourne, uh, how's the ankle, Butch, you, you're sort of back to... As close as you're going to get to 100, percent or there's a little bit of a ways to go. Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a little way off yet, um, but I've got rid of the crutches, so that's a start. But yeah, no, we're not we're not 100, uh, percent but um, um, it's good enough for me to do what I need to do anyway. When was the last time you felt like you're at 100? <sighs> percent Well, probably back in like, early two. Early two thousand, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. What were you I, doing? I was training to run the Melbourne Marathon, and um, I did. I did a heavy load of about ten or fifteen k. I can't remember. All I know is that I blew a quad, oh, and no. um, and uh, that was the, that was the end of me. And uh, I never got to um, I never got to uh, exhaust my body at an old age running forty six kilometers. So. It's got to be probably, it's probably a positive in that, isn't it? Yeah, you win some, you lose some. Mm. Anyway, I don't, think, um, I don't think anyone here would be capable of running. I don't think we could run a marathon if we like um, as a, as a tag team. As you know, a team? Like I'll, do no. the five or six I'll do the first start. 200 meters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's all, all, what's your resting heart rate? Oh, 45, 46. Depends how many times I've backed a horse, you know. Ridden by us, so. I reckon Rob's will be less than mine. Rob's that have Rob would have the lowest here. Easily. Uh, Unregisterable. Over the last three weeks in hospital, they they tell me that mine's exceptionally low. Is that good or bad? Um either means you're just an elite athlete or you don't give a rat's ass about anything, I suppose. <laughs> so to maybe I'm a Maybe maybe I'm a combination of both. Um, is it is a horse's heart rate anything you've ever investigated as like a yielding angle? Yeah, yeah. No, we we're heavily into sports science, and um, uh, it uh, it's it's more common than what or more prevalent in the industry than what you think because um, uh, back in the day we uh, we just we just like handheld heart rates post gallops, post trials, post races. And um, there's no shadow of doubt, especially if you're looking for a good staying horse, if they've got a very good heart rate. So that's at that heart lung capacity. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a good, um, a very good elite staying horse, city, well, actually we'll call it city class and above, you know, they, they can go out and gallop and, and come back with a heart rate of like 68 to 70, you know. Um, some horses can do, go and do the same, go and come back with a heart rate of 98. So um, it's just part of the puzzle, though. It's, um, you can't get sort of stuck on one particular thing. Um, it's just like, it's like data, you know. Um, uh, you know, football's, it's become the thing in footy with all these, you know, um, all the stats, um, you know, on why the good teams are better than the others. And, you know, time in half and you know, crap, 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 all that stuff. Um, mm, but, the pressure rating's big now, isn't it? They love the pressure yeah, rating. But they're they're all that good and that elite at doing it now. Um, up until 24 hours ago, uh, no one predicted the, uh, the the second coming of Essendon. So, you know, um, it's good, but being able to interpret data to its right form, that's uh, that'd be the key, Mick. You'd know all about that with horse racing, probably Dicko and all you blokes that have a punt and, and use ratings. 
ratings are good, but that's just part of it. You know, it's it's a good tool, and I've found it very helpful. But it's a it's it's a guide. Big week. You started using you some guys. of this. Hang on, Mick. Sorry, but big, big right, week for both Scurry and Butch, the the Hawks. Like, are you guys starting to acknowledge their existence again after they knocked off St Kilda, or sort of focusing still on your secondary teams? I think it's the Dogs for Scurry, and I think it's the Bombers for Butch. Yeah, no, they're just on the back burner for me. Yeah, until they you know, come, you know, when they come back with another wave. But um, he, uh, Sam Mitchell knows what he's up to. He's, um, I think the game might have gone past a few of those older coaches. What do you think? I think Ross Lyon would be one of the great trainers of all time. The way he can deflect and just, you know, carry it on, carry it on, carry it on. He's very good at it. Hmm. Jack, yeah. Jack I, I actually had something on St Kilda late, late in the game. And so, yeah, um, I don't have much faith in Hawthorne. Jesus, bro. It's all right. Yeah. Sorry, Mick. No, you're all right. No, I was just saying to Butch that um, I've been doing a little bit of work with the Equimeter stuff and the data and, you know, very horse-specific in, in how they return it and their recovery. But uh, it is a big piece of the puzzle. A lot of the time you're hearing it's best used for seeing when horses are having issues, not necessarily when they're, you know, at their peak, but you can really get a, get a, um, a good read on when a horse is not recovering well, or um, especially the heart rate recovery stuff. So it's really interesting the way the game's moving, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the one uh, we, we use those um, e-trackers. Yeah. And uh, which I think is the, the standard, standard tool for everybody. Um, and the one that uh, is a really good indicator is stride length. Um, and so when you can match the heart rate with the stride length um, to know that your horse at home is performing uh, at its best, uh, then that's part of the puzzle. I mean, to look inside a horse, you can you, you can do blood tests on them, Um that might show up, you know, a few different things. You can, it's all it's making alterations with the blood test. You can be, you know, high and low in different areas. And um, probably the probably the, the biggest thing you get out of a blood is for a horse that struggles with uh, high muscle enzymes, uh, which can be quite a debilitating thing for a horse, um, especially mares. Um, we find that they can grow out of it. Um so that's, you know, I think if uh, be a bit patient and you handle your horse and manage it properly, you can get through the other side of it. Sometimes they spend a lifetime battling the, battling the disease itself. There's probably some good horses that... Um, Is that a tie-up be... horse? Sorry? Is that a tie-up horse? Yeah, tying up, acid urea, high muscle enzymes. Um, and that's a... It's a I would say that, you know, when you're watching a race and you see a horse back in the field and he peels out and goes whooshka and then comes home at the rate of knots, I guarantee you that the uh, muscle enzymes are well within their parameters when a horse performs like that because they just, they might, you know, if a horse hits back in the field and lets go and then one day he just doesn't let go, um, that could easily be um, part of the puzzle, you know. Um, so it's... To me, in a blood test, it's paramount that you get those levels extremely right. Um, so, yeah, it's it's at the end of the day, I, I suppose I've been around too long now, but at the end of the day, read your horse a um, bit like Rob does in the mounting yard. You know, it's, they, they can't talk, but they'll tell you. I mean, if your horse sweats every time and then doesn't sweat, you know, what does that mean? If the horse is calm and then one day does sweat, uh, that's probably more of a concern, I'd say. Um, but um, yeah, just just sit back and look at them and read them, and um, you know, it's not an exact science, but they are animals, so you just you know treat them accordingly. And um, the easiest thing you can do as a horse trainer is stand there and look at your horse in the mounting yard and say, well, how does this stack up with these other horses? You know, and that's the for a young trainer, that would be the key. I would say, how does your horse look? You know, now, if you haven't got the ability to say that it doesn't look as good as the rest of them, then you're probably in a bit of trouble. But um, it's, you know, if you don't think that they look good enough, then 
that's probably a good start to find out why. A good start. Hey, um, speaking of good horses, just folk, Jack, uh, it was impressive again in the Hollandale. It was a um, rewarding result, but a frustrating result at the same time to get knocked off by a horse at that price, although he's, you know, a well-credentialed horse and, you know, you could see that before and after. Um, yeah, frustrated a little bit, but proud of him and uh, I thought the ride was perfect. Um, you know, I think the horse would have, uh, relished a little bit more tempo, but I don't know if he would have relished making that tempo. So um, I think the ride was was really sound. Um, he travelled deluxe. He really enjoyed the heavy conditions. Picked up 90 grand. I think that ticks us over half a million, John. And we'll run in three weeks for his last run of that prep and name him up at the uh, the big dance. Shout out to PBL. Uh, phenomenal race. Great idea. <laughs> and uh, we're looking forward to being at Royal Randwick on Melbourne Cup Day. Butch, just from your perspective, you know, a horse doing what that horse has done, Sydney, on a, on a uh, pretty tough trip to Sydney, but the seven days to Brisbane, that's a pretty tolling sort of, um, you know, trip. Three weeks ideal, do you think, from your perspective? Um, yeah, I think he... Um, uh, I'm just trying to... I was actually just looking at his form before because... Um, uh, uh, Jono's all over this. Jono, when was his backup um, last preparation? He, he backed up into the Eclipse, which he won, uh, and then he yep. backed up again seven days after that into the Ballarat Cup and ran third. Yeah, look, I he he's there's no issue there. I mean, I think one of the key things in form people talk about the backup and how good they go. Um, I always look to see what they do after the backup. That's one of the more uh, important parts of the puzzle to me, and uh, he um, he he did two two lots of backups, didn't he, to get into the, the Ballarat Cup, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and that was on a heavy track that day. We remember that track. Um, he, yeah, no, he, look, he's a tough, especially a horse his age, you know, because you don't see too many horses. Um, you know, you can you can talk form lines and backups, but are you talking three year old fillies, seven year old geldings? It's a huge difference. You know, yeah, massive. 100%. Difference. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, no, no, you know, and, and Gavin knows the horse well enough by now. And, um, you know, uh, like I said last week, you know, you looked at that photo of him when he arrived up in Brisbane. I mean, you know, some horses travel good, some horses travel bad. You know, he probably had a good look around at the scenery on his way up there and enjoyed the trip. So, great you know, drive. If you've never done it, Butch. The Sydney, hey. the Sydney to Brisbane, the like Sydney to Gold Coast drives, oh. like great drives. I did it in um, I did it in COVID. Um, uh, I had to get through a, a checkpoint going up to the breeze up sales, and uh, for all you government officials, I was laying on the back seat uh, under a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, Allegedly. Those days are Palaszczuk. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, yeah. The other the other the other point about backups is is backup on a on a and a brutally run race or back on on a walk like that and that was a walk so you know that that that's into the mix as well jack yeah i think the the run didn't suit him to win that race although he beat everything else in the market convincingly yeah but it'll assist him big time to have a, a really good performance for his final run for this prep but you know whether on that speed was millions not three dollars you know he, his 2000 mm. meters back to 1800 um our boy didn't get a chance to to be last man standing to be brave. He got, he's got out sprinted by a horse that you know a proper group to weight for age. Um, yeah, wet track star, which I did put a bit of a note in on my notification. What's why is it this price? Um, you saw that, Jack. Yeah, yeah. It was a weekend of uh, it was a weekend of just trying to pray and, and adjust for rain, wasn't it? In racing, footy, one of the great escapes, Gano in the. I had the under 45 in the para Broncos game. Oh. 44 points were scored with about 27 minutes to go, and I turned it off. The anxiety was like it was hurting my stomach <laughs> into just folk to play. So oh, wow. I saw I saw the score was the same when I was Bath and Teddy like 20 minutes later. And I yep. was like, oh, my God, this could be one of the greatest escapes of all time. And then I had to wait, you know, 14 hours for just folk to kick off. And then at the 250, I was just going, please, boy, be tough. Just be, just be tough. Run second, run third. 
and he was. Okay. He is tough. And uh, he is tough. Just for just for um, first time listeners, Teddy's a newborn. Yeah, Teddy's my uh, third. What do we reckon? Four week old. I'm saying. You four week old son, the third and the final. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm no longer at stud. Good man. Can't good man. Any uh, anyone out there that's um, good with a scalpel, uh, reach out. Want to sponsor the show? Oh well, how's this? Um, I don't know if this is Jack, appropriate for myself, our podcast, but I'm ready. We're in, we're in bed last night, and I'm doing the form for sand down because you know you you got a young family now. I got to spend some of my time working while she's mothering. I look over at her phone, and normally she'd just be scrolling and you know finding reels that make her laugh. Guess what was on her screen? I think Butch will probably get this. A big word starting with a V. <laughs> She's booked me in. <laughs> too good. Well, if you come to see more, we'll stick your head in a gumboot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too good. Too good. Hey, um, Jackie posted uh, something to the group the other day um, from Bren O'Brien on X. The same point of their career is I am invincible versus hellbent. Runners 192 versus 203 for Hellbent. Winners 129 to Vinny, 109 to Hellbent. 11 stakes winners for I'm Invincible, five for Hellbent, and two Group 1 winners for Hellbent versus the one for uh, I'm Invincible. Um, good chat, Jack. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I hope this isn't a theme for the rest of uh, my life for Butch, but he's been a lot keener on Hellbent than I have. Um, particularly the Phillies all sales season and that's pretty hard to argue with those numbers I guess um, there's group ones and there's group ones I will say that but I th- I think she's a very 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 like talented horse Benedetta I thought she was for a long time you know since we were doing radio together um, yeah I don't know like for me it sounds fair but it just makes me keener to go against it because it's going to be overhyped and overplayed now at the next, um, you know, June on the Gold Coast and then in January on the Gold Coast and onwards, Butch. Yeah, so I would have said that I'm Invincible went to start off a very low base um, of Brudenaires. Um So he wasn't he wasn't um, highly commercial. Um uh, I distinctly remember uh, a mare that was bred to just be a winter mud horse uh, that raced up locally up around here. And I think I won a midweeker at Sandy and on a heavy 10 in the middle of June as a six-year-old mare or something. And it was just a real plotter, real mudder. And uh, it went to I'm Invincible and produced an outstanding sprinting filly. And at that time, I thought to myself, uh, this horse is either a superstar or this is one of the greatest flukes of, of breeding you've ever seen. And as it turned out, he just upgraded that mare by that far. It wasn't funny. And um, and I think once then, when you see where he's at now, I'd say that all the good mares have turned up. Um, he's started producing all the good horses that keep coming through that we've seen to make him the stallion he is. Uh, and I would have said Hell Bent had a bit more of a following, a bit of a higher base, a bit more solid with the mares. Um, always got a winner. He probably backed up with some books. I'd say, you know, um, I'd, I'd still have I'm Invincible ahead at this stage, um, even though, you know, Hell Bent's trending. He, he's, he's just, Hell Bent's just a sire of winners. You know, that's, he's just, you know, there's uh, he's one of those stallions that um, you want to breed a horse to race. I think there's a cap on them in the sales ring. Um, they sell they sell sell well, but um, uh, I think if uh, no, look, he's a, he's he's a he works both ways. There's a commercial value to him to a point, um, but he just gets they just all win. Um, that's the one the ones that I see. So they're good solid types. I think to back um, that up, or she he's. I'm just looking now. He's 61.3% runners to winners. Yeah. You know, Colts. Yeah. And only 54.3 Phillies, but the Phillies have gone to that elite level. So, yeah. You know, they're, they're returning roughly 
the same prize money versus what they cost, Colts versus Phillies. But then you've got that, you know, 4.3% of them have won a group race now, and it's hard um, to argue with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's – so um, uh, all it does for me – Going left when everyone goes right, I, I'd be more keen now to buy a hellbent colt, uh, you know, because he's going to get this. It's just going to happen, you know. Time, time's the only variable there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah I look, he 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 wasn't a highly fashionable horse. Um, I'm invincible when he went to stud. So, um, the, well, the Mitchells will they'd, they'd tell you what his book was, you know. Um, but that his book would have improved markedly, and um, and that's why with even reduced choice, like you know, he 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 had a lot of hype. Went to Arrowfield, mm. would have been backed hard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so totally different start to life, you know, totally different start to life. So, um, uh, you know, he's done it. I'm invincible. He's done it a tough way, and he's still got. Hey, oh, Britain Tycoon is. Uh, yeah, he came off probably. He, he would have been a very low base when he started too. Um, so um, I think he got his, I reckon his service fee got down to about eight thousand dollars at some stage. Uh, written tycoon, wow. and now he's uh, he gets advertised, you know, as sort of being he doesn't have a fee uh, to be advised, or you know, they only serve so many mares or what, inquire over, whatever. Within. Um, hey? Inquire within. That's what in Costa started at eight thousand for Blue Gum Farm, I recall. Yeah, I remember well, uh, Rob, because I bought an Encosta de Lago. Uh, I bought one a year in his first three crops, and after he uh, hit the, the uh, headlines, um, and they came good, I couldn't get near them after that. So, um, but they were very good types. Uh, he his horses stood out. Very, very good times. Um, hey, Rob, on the topic of, of breeding, you had a question um, for Butch earlier about uh, the safest lines. Um, yeah, 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 look, I, I'm, you know, just it's all recency bias, but I was thinking it'd be, it'd be something like that Danehill, like with Duke's Choice line crossed with like the Cross of Lago, but I, I hear I'd be breeding an elephant. So over to you, Butch. What, what, what would you, if you had? You know, what would be your pick for it? You know, this has got to get to the races and it's got to win a Saturday race. What would you be looking for? Well, when you're breeding, um, when you're breeding, uh, to like you, you've mentioned Redutes over in Costa, um, but you've got to pay probably, and a lot of people, but like I said about you know, horses in mounting yards, which is your forte, you know, at the end of the day, they're horses, they're animals. So when the mare produces a fold, it doesn't matter what the cross is. I mean, look at the fold. Look at the, the type of, you know, the conformation and, and the, the whole physicality of the, of, the, of the horse itself. So I don't think enough is being put into, you know, a lot of people um, look at, you know, they buy, you, you've seen the commercial mares, you know, these group one mares, and they just, they just rattle them off to the best stallions that are standing around the mm. top two, three or four, and um, they can breed some horrendous types, um, you know. So, um, and some mares, which come from obscurity, can just every year produce a, ma a magnificent type, which becomes a good racehorse, and they're just, um, I think, uh, Godolphin, they've got a, a, a mare, can't think of her name, but she went to, she... she yes, Starts with Sorry. E. S it starts with E, the Essasoria or something, the Astern and um, Elise one. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, I think Astern, uh, Elise, uh, which is Sepoy, I think. And yeah. and Hello Crown, is that another one? Or um, or was one of them by Hello Crown? But yeah, she um yeah, she just went to everything. Um uh, and just produced really, really good horses. So every now and again, you get, you know, and the, one of the best mares uh, going around uh, in our generation um, was uh, Eight Carat, and she was unraced. Um, and, you know, she uh, she was one of the, what do they call them, blue hen mares. Mm. She was one of the uh, one of the best going around. But um, um, the, so the, the, the Redoots, 
in cost to cross uh, produced eight stakes winners. Um, so that's a, a very good return. Um, and uh, and also produced uh, the last tycoon mares uh, also produced eight stakes winners to reduce choice. So um, um, you know he like he was just a good stallion himself anyway. But um, uh, you know you can if you go and look at enough at the sales, Rob, you can certainly see uh, he reduces out of an Acosta mare that on type hasn't worked. Um, and I, I'm just going to put that down to just that, you know, the the, the physical type of, you know, because Reduce was a big horse. He was a he was a uh, he was a decent animal, you know. So yeah, just... speaking of generational mares, Butch um, Imperatrice, out your man John Stewart over in the US, he'll make his way over again, no doubt, and hang out in the Gold Coast. They reckon he's going to pay six million dollars for Imperatrice. So we're going to have a little nearest the pin here. Person who's furthest away from the pin has to pay for the next dinner when we all get together. So we'll start with you, Rob, and we'll go around we'll go around the table. What does Imperish you sell for? Uh five point six million dollars. Jack. Six. Rob. Uh, Rob done Rob. <laughs> John, you want to have a crack, son? I, I was gonna go six as well. Yeah. Well you can't be the same. Too late. Right. Five, five, nine. Oh, oh. me. Here we go. Butcher goes six, one. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll, he'll, he'll go up to six. He, he went up to nine for the Winks one, wasn't it? Like he said he would. So just back that he'll get all the way there again. So who, who who's the highest at the moment? Jack at six. Jack at six. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, this is like shooting fish in a barrel. 6.1 for me. Oh. Um, but um, just, uh, just, just on that, that fellow. What's his name? John Stewart. Yeah, yeah. Um, From Resolute I, Racing. Yeah. Look, yeah. I don't think we're in danger of crossing paths. <laughs> um, uh, he, yeah, he says a lot of things and doesn't always back it up. So, um, you know, um, it's probably there's a lot of Americans that wouldn't be happy that he's doing that because it puts them all in a bad light, but. He could just be a bit of a um he could be just a bit loose with his words at times, that bloke, I think. And um, you know, he was going to buy winks at all costs and he didn't. And um he was gonna do this and that. At the moment he's 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 played on was it two to La Vida, he paid three million or something for her? Three point two, yep. Three point two. You know, well he knows he's gonna probably earn money back from that, then she's worth X and that's pretty that's a really low safe play. When I say low. This guy's talking in telephone numbers, and yeah, no, he's full of he's full of hot air at the moment in my eyes. So um, uh, stop talking and just uh, do something, you know, because the it. smartest the smartest people in our our uh, industry don't uh, don't talk like that. So um, uh, so he hasn't got into that category yet. Not there yet. I'll go five point nine five just to make sure I don't have to buy oh. anyone. You know. No, yeah. no, no. Too no. sharp. That's not Just allowed. No, no. Overruled. They're yeah. not going to bid 5.9. They're going to, it's going to be going up at 100. It's probably going to go up at I'll 20. take 50s. I'll take 50s. So Bush, the, do, you, do you allow like, that? Butch is, he's a good operator. Butch understands. My, my um, strategy here is to put down 6.1, call the bloke a tool and hope he bids up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. He's gone. Oh, Jackie is Three healthy. Um, don't worry about him. Don't write in. He's fine. Three point two for two to Vita seems a big over to me. Is it? You'd imagine anything that he buys would be overs, right? And, and that'd be pushing him, and and you know he just he's got deep oh. pockets. She's she's a nice walking filly um, for sure, and but you know I'm not sure. How much more she's going to win on the racetrack? You know, she's maybe listed horse. If that. I, I think if I was paying up for a race filly at three point two, I'd be wanting her to be doing it at late two, not late three, um, so that you've got a full twelve months mick of a very good race horse. So, you know, um, you know those fillies that were running around in the sires and the you know all those good fillies. They're the ones, 
you project something like any of those that that are going to be a good three year old, and they're the ones you want to be paying that sort of money for. But um, um, yeah, at the moment, um, yeah. Anyway, we'll see. Um, so anyway, the challenge is thrown down to our man. What's his name? Uh, Jim. Johnny Stewart. Johnny Stewart. Johnny Stewart. He's gonna. He probably listens every week anyway. Uh, I've no, I've no doubt. If you want to come on and sort of get back a butch, you're more than welcome. Um, so oh, get yeah, up I'd, early because be, we do it when we do it. I'd be keen to ask him of his strategy of um, of being a uh, a tool, but um, uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll say, it, say it often <laughs> enough. He might he might bid up, but he um, to me he sort of uh, he, he really reeks of um, what was that guy that used to do a lot of talking and. Spending a lot of money and end up um, blah, big Kev, blah, blah. hey, big Kev. Um, Not Nathan no, he, he was, he was, he was um, uh, dollar bill, Bill Blah. Yeah, yeah. He's Spider got by of, Jimmy. He's got a bit of the Bill Blah horses about him in my eyes, anyway. <laughs> I know that you hey, came up. People who talk too much, Butch, but you didn't really answer my question. If you had to, if you had to breed one that's going to get to the races, what would it, who would it be out of, or would they give it too much away? No, if I'm going to breed one to go to the races, yeah, and you got oh, unlimited. So, so okay, oh, on the current, on our current, um, yeah, um, uh, what the what's out there commercially now, yeah. Um, breed one to go to the races. Well, that if it's unlimited, you've just. I, but I would still do research. My my two. The basis of the research for breeding a good racehorse would be still race based around, um, uh, you know, uh, trying to get the performance of the sire and the dam. Um, wouldn't be that, you know, I wouldn't be that stuck on having a Group One winning sire and a mare that's produced anything or, you know, overly fantastic, but um, and more of the, more so the cross uh, and more so physical type, matching to physical type. Um, um, names, I mean, names don't mean much, uh, Rob, when you talk about that because, you know, you, it, you can go through all the, the obvious ones, um, but I'm very well aware that some of the best mares can be maiden winners or, you know, to two start winners or unraced and um, still have a very good career as broodmare. So yeah, I'd be, I'd sort of tend to go down that path, but, but um, you'd certainly be buying out of a good family, you know, like you'd forgive the first, the, the one you've got, but it, it would be a really solid background, you know. Hey Rob, I know you're probably looking to have a better Hawks for anything you like uh, Queensland futures wise. Have you had a look? Uh, moving forward, any runners in Sydney that were progressive enough to go up there and get some, uh, look, get some cash? Look, I, I, I wouldn't be jumping off think about it. I think it's going to go to the weight for age. Kingston Smith, he won it last year. I think there's nothing wrong with his three runs. The, the gloss has gone off. My, from my mail, the horse is, is going really well in himself. And 1,400, quick run race. I think he could, he could, he could bounce back at a bit of a price. Uh, other, other than that... Um, so like the Derby and, and the Oaks is, is a little bit up in the air. You know, I thought a horse called Bullets High might make the Derby. Uh, it might not make Queen be in at this stage. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, not, you know, that Numerin, you know, if Weta gets a, a soft track, don't give up on it. I just had Buckley's the other day. Yeah, it's amazing that Numerin got to such a price when him and Weta kind of, you know, went to the line all last year in the Brisbane Group 1. Um, so, yeah, um, I think we've got a pretty good 10,000 this week. Um, I might have to have shot me on private eye. Um, <laughs> because, um, anyway, yeah. Um, because I can, and it'd probably be a, it'd probably be a decent price again if he gets on a firm track. I kind of liked that where he's run the other day. It was pretty good. And he's just never paraded better. This, this has been the best. Other than the day he won the, um, the, whatever it was, the gear kick or the race after the Everest, but he was three wide and bolted in. Um, I think it's the best he's ever looked. What so has he just been it? poorly placed? Sorry, sorry, Joe. Here you go. Has he just been poorly placed then? If he's parading the best he's ever paraded, what's what's going on? Why is he not winning races? Well, a lot of people would say he is a 1,400, 1,500 metre horse. I remember as a three-year-old, he won a 
1500 meter or maybe even a 2000 meter race in the Brisbane Carnival on a wet track. Um, yeah, maybe a thousand meters, um, the lightning and then going up and distance. Look, his racing pattern would suggest that that's, um, you know, maybe a bridge too far. But then again, he, you know, he led Imperatriz that day. He looked, he looked at half the winner at the 200. So maybe that run just took a bit out of him. Um, I think he's a horse that goes well with his run space. And his horse that, you know, they, the stable keeps saying he needs dry track, but he did run well on that bottomless track the other day. Rob and then Mick, Corniche, three-year-old Colt, PB Saturday, heavy track, off a little cheeky jump out. Love him. I reckon he's about a length and a half off being a proper horse. He's a three-year-old, so he's going to have to throw him in if they throw him in this prep still in Queensland. Rob, what do you think of the horse? And then, Mick, do you know where he's going? I, uh, I, I love the horse. I, I, we've been, we've backed him every start in Sydney this time in. Uh, he ran, he ran good races without winning, uh, every time. I think he ran seconds and thirds. So all at good prices. And, um, I actually did one of my rare interstate bets. We backed him on Saturday. So, um, you know, I thought it was a gusty win. I didn't like it at the 200. I, I didn't think it was going to win at all. And then he somehow grounded out, whether that was the J Mac factor jumping on a little bit. I, I, I don't know, but. Yeah, he's, just, he's one of the best three-year-old types. And, um, yeah, he's, he's surely, a, if he gets into the Stradbroke, he's, he's, he's probably going to be well-weighted. Well, he will be well-weighted and, um, yeah, some sort, of ch- some, some sort of chance. Yeah, they were, like, super bullish about his chances, like, all week, especially on a rain at Picker Track, that sort of goal leg. And he, he's gone enormous. Really ran the fastest last 600 metres, uh, 400 metres, pretty much, pretty much the fastest everything at the meeting. Uh, he's noms for the Kingston Smith, and then two weeks later, the Stradbroke. So you'd think 13 or 1,400 metres, um, that progression's right up his alley. Nice. I think I think he's flying that horse. I thought there was a, like a, a sneaky horse. I don't know if right to party goes to Queensland. I don't know if it swims, but it was enormous first up for the Freedmans at um, Morpherville on Saturday. It's the fastest last 600 of the day, fresh. Uh, there's an autumn sun filly, three-year-old Uncle Chris Butch, changing colours, Johnny O'Neill and Aussie Kurt. It won and won really well, well-backed Kind and Maiden, 1,450 metres. They're the sort of joint that would throw it at the stumps, you'd think. Um, it might be headed to Queensland. And I thought Oak Hill, it's a per and canto, so I'd lean towards some information from John and Butch as to if it swims. It was an exciting horse, like early on, last prep. Returned enormous. PB, flew home, fastest last 600 of the day, midweek 64, sand down. Again, it's a three-year-old. It has to head north, I think. Jono? Uh, I'll probably pass that on to Butch, I think. It's one on a soft five, the horse itself, so... What um what was that horse that you said one of kind main? Changing colours. What as its first start? Yeah. Yeah. It just Autumn depends. Sun Philly. So Autumn Sun Philly, yeah. Um uh well it's a bit trendy at the moment to have one, isn't it? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's one there's one at, at Packenham Thursday night having its first start of Chris Wallers. But it's had like twelve trials. Wow. Um, and it's running in a 1400 maiden so um i think it's like i said before about those you know paying three million dollars for the, that other filly you know i'm a little bit worried about these fillies that come out this time of the year um you know there's not too many of them go on i think we can all remember ethereal winning and winks winning and they uh you know i think to get a really a, a good horse that's going to be um, have a, a good racing career, you know, they need to be quite dominant um, because uh, everyone's trying to get to the same race this time of the year, aren't they? You know? yeah. um, so I'd be, I'd just be a bit wary about all of those, um, all of those types, but, um, uh, but it's, the, yeah, I mean, if, if as a trainer, if you can get them there earlier, you want to get them there. And the, the reason that they can't get them there um it just detracts away from their you know from from the, their future so um 
yeah, you just you just want to see them doing something a bit earlier to to be to be decent horses. Um, uh, Rob, I got a question for you. Um, do you think that Private Eye would have been placed any differently had uh, think about it not been racing through the same campaign? Good question. The old uh, Placia Priero predicament. Um, yeah, I, I think they've they've um, they've looked at that and they've tried to keep them separate. So um, yes, I think I think yes. And whether they've tried to to make him a, a sprinter and they've tried to make the other one a miler as well. Um, so maybe they're being a bit too smart on on both counts with those horses. It's easy, it's a lot easier when you're training horses. A lot easier to not work a horse much and sprint it, uh, and then for it to continue on and stretch out or, or keep racing than to stretch a horse out and then find out that, you know, it's not performing or you've not bottomed it out, but you've sort of gassed it a little bit uh, and then you have to recharge them a bit. So uh, I would be guessing that uh, Private Eye could maybe continue on um, and uh, do really well through the Brisbane winter. There's one there that I didn't mind, Mayor of Mount Buller, $26 for the Oaks. I thought that was uh, a ridiculous price. So we could probably have something on it. Uh, anyone else have anything to add? Queensland Futures or future races coming up? What about the filly that one called Scarlet Oak? Do yeah, we? it was interesting. Interesting win, wasn't it? Jack, did you catch that? Mm -mm. Well, they ran, I don't know how slow it was. Let me just bring it up, I can tell you. It was, when it, it won its won its race before it went to Australia, and very very nice style over in New Zealand. But yeah, they found it. I mean, matter matter, one point eight in a maiden, and they yeah. brought it over here. It was it was pretty good in the Group Three. Then goes to Newcastle. They've gone thirteen lengths slower to the six hundred, and it's just gone underneath them and spanked them. I don't know. I don't know what its ceiling is because you haven't haven't got anywhere near it. Third well, no, fastest, near it. third fastest last one hundred meters of the day. Entitled to though. PR, PR, PR. The old man didn't tip it to me. He tipped me two others in the race. So obviously it's not much, not a great type. Um, but he's lightly flame, wet that, type. For the translation for people listening, obviously Rob, um, the number one horse whisperer in our world, um, but he's obviously sired by a horse whisperer as well. So um, he'll reference his, his parents from time to time. Um, they do most of their work out of Newcastle. Um, so... That's where that's at. If you were giving Scarlet Oak uh, a push for the Oaks, that Connasana for for Debbie, that was the one that beat it when it was first up in Australia. If it gets a wet wet Oaks, that'd be you know right in there, wouldn't it? That killed them. That day. They killed them, and it's come out and got beaten for four lengths at Hawkesbury on a good track. Might be a, might be a swimmer. Back, back to back to the Queensland and Derby and Oaks. Can what they come the out of anywhere though, Rob, to, to win these races? Like could you could you win a class one at Hawkesbury on a on a Tuesday and then all of a sudden be in contention? Yes. Yeah. That was and the that, thing that... last week. Last year did that. that... Yeah. There's one going around today. It's a half to an Oaks winner too. So <laughs> um, you know, fingers crossed that she can get the job done on a heavy track and sort of put put the writing on the wall that she might be ready to head north. Yeah. It, has there been a, a proper group one horse that's won a, a Queensland Derby or um, Oaks in the last since Winks is, is there been one like Sontag I remember won the Derby never it was, it was like a slug never won another race uh, I think Kovalika might have won it last Kovalika. year yeah. that, well, that's a prop that, that's like a solid group two three maybe horse you know in Sydney so does that make it a group one horse in Brisbane and Adelaide maybe yeah Mr. Quickie what would have won a two rack do us it, do us do us, do us, one of Queensland Oaks. Yeah, well, she's probably the best. She's, she's the best. But Mr. Quickie won a Stradbroke, didn't he? Um, Stradbroke, he won a big, Stradbroke, won a big group one at Caulfield. Jamie Carr rode him. Turak, was it Turak? One something. But and, you're right. And, and the Derby. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Well, yeah, he's the exception to the rule. But he, yeah, he's, he's obviously that class of horse. That is one on class over the derby as opposed to being a stayer, I'd say. Seamus. No, it isn't. Our oh, go yeah. well today, Jack. 
I'd be very disappointed if she doesn't run a big race. I expect her to be very, very hard to beat. That is about, about. We talk about race race six, number one. She's been she's been heavily backed in the last couple of hours. Mm. Yeah, into favoritism now, deservedly so ludicrous. Um the move for the other thing early. Uh upcoming runners, Jono. Obviously until Bahala today at Hawks through race six. Uh, anything else coming up this week? Uh, nothing else accepted at this stage, uh, but there were there were a few nominations for the weekend. Uh, we'll the trial have, is going around. We will probably have Poland and uh, maybe another horse run in Adelaide on Saturday. Um, there definitely going to have Poland running in Adelaide in a, in a nice race for him to get his uh, confidence back. Um. That's all I have off the top of my head. We've got a couple of horses in Melbourne just on a bit of a, a sort of waiting game, you know, treading a bit of water, waiting for the water to come. Well, we want a bit more give in the ground before we uh, unleash them. So um, Poland will be the main play for us on Saturday and in Adelaide. Send them up here, mate. It hasn't stopped raining for three weeks. Mm-hmm. Couple going to the trials won't be too far away. Order to charge will be probably at the races uh, this you know, this time next week, heading to the races. So that'll be good for Beery. Um, good to see how that's going. Uh, any any shares available? We should. What's the horse of the week, Jono? Who are we getting into this week? Is it the Alabama Express? It'd have to be Butcher's horse, the old Churchill. The uh, yeah, right. yeah. It, it's uh, that was a that was a decent decent push there from. Um, from the breaker who's, who's got him in pre-training, he's you saw him there with the vision of him um, getting slapped with the towel and you know the towel over his neck and everything in the in the gates there. He didn't flinch whatsoever. He's he's just um, that's yeah. what I do to Das when we're when we're putting on the um, the mat here, getting my sort of Earl Woods on already. You know what I mean? Just trying to really get in his head and make sure he stays focused, keep the head still, just keep it steady. One, two, one, two, and that's what they're doing with the Churchill cult. No, he's returned mm-hmm. second prep. Great order. He'll be he'll be probably going to Nathan in about in a fortnight or so. Uh, but no, he's got every chance to be a to be an early two year old runner and um, still about twenty five percent left in him uh, if you if you want to get involved. Um, Which he was okay. he was um, he was bred and red uh, on Kerry Tibby's farm, which was Goodwood Goodwood Farm, uh, which produces very very good Group One horses. Kerry's been uh, a leading breeder for many, many years, and uh, she is so uh, concise with uh, her feedback on every horse. I bought a, a few horses off her over the time. Very good. Um, and she almost guaranteed this horse. She said he is bomb-proof, he's tough, he eats, and she said, don't worry about what anyone tells you. You know, he will be a two-year-old. So um, I uh, I respect Kerry so much that uh, um, I think that uh, everything we see now coming from the breaker, very, very good feedback. And um, I, almost, I almost hinted a, a touch of excitement in Nathan's voice the other day. It's hard to detect, but it's... Um, well, that's a rarity. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I thought there was a little high pitch there at one stage. Either that or he jumped off the fence or whatever he was doing. But um, he, uh, he he was... <laughs> Where's Jack gone? <laughs> Come on, mate. Stay with us. Um, yeah, no, no. He, look, um, he spoke for that long, Nathan, and everything that came out of his mouth was positive. And it just goes to show because, you know, you deal with horses like that and, you know, you can't say anything bad about them because they just please, they just do what they've got to do. And that's that horse. And he was, he was, he was a beauty at the sales. Uh, Rob, you you know, in the back ring, in the mounting yard, he just conducted himself so good. He was, mm. uh, yeah, he, he was, he was great. So um, um, the, the highest of confidence in purchasing a good racehorse when buying the Churchill Con. Well, you backed it up by buying into him yourself, mate. So um, it's packed a bit much more of an endorsement than that. Yeah, don't worry, I might get a bit more of it too. 
It is. Oh, well, you don't get better, many better pushes than that. Um, fellas, it's been a ball. This is just a walk, thanks. Jack, anything to add? No, gamble responsibly. Jono, J O N O, at themailbag.com.au if you want to race uh, horses with us. And English Digital uh, will present itself to close uh, tomorrow afternoon. And uh, who knows? We might even have some more horses to to offer to anyone who wants to race a horse with us. J O N O, Jono, at themailbag.com.au. I hope you have a really, really good weekend. I hope until Valhalla pisses in at Hawkesbury on Tuesday afternoon and uh, yeah whatever you're doing be safe and have fun bye for now